Today, we're going to take a look at how to build alviaries. Stay tuned. Welcome, friends, to a new episode of Feed the Beast Ultimate Reloaded. How are you guys today? I am Clobber Stump. I'm having a great day. A few updates. We've got our Gravi chest, Grava, Gravi chest blade back and our full quantum suit. We're good. We've got it going. Look at us. We are awesome. <laughs> cool. So I've replaced that. We are back at it. And last episode, we talked about how to pure, how to to make pure bees. Um, so uh, just for your reference, I, I I am now at Oily Bees, and I've been producing for a while. And uh, we've got a fair amount of combs going, and I've got about a stack and a half almost of oily drones. So we can make ourselves some really good oily bees. I've also went through, and besides the emeralds, um, I, used to, I made the Blizzy Queen. Um, because if you look at these, they make Blizz Powder. Look at that. So this we had to mess with and get it really cold and the humidity had to be under 75 for that to start producing. But we've got like uh, a couple stacks of that too. Reason for this is we need the Blizz Powder to make Cryothium, which is used for making Signalum. Before I was just kind of going out to the Tundras and trying to find them and kill them at nighttime. And it was really painful and tough. But now we have the ability to make it. So... Um, there's also another bee further than that, the gelid. Yeah, the gelid bee. So if we look at the uses of that, that actually drops cryothium. So we can breed one up and get that going too. Um, so we'll get into that too. But all right, today, last episode, we kind of talked about pure bees, but we didn't really talk about alviaries. So today we would like to talk about alviaries. Uh, there's a few things that you need to have pre-baked in before you decide you want to do alviaries. So the first thing you do and you start with is obviously you start with um, apiaries. We've got a whole bunch of those. And if you've been breeding up like I have, you've got a fair amount already. But now it's time to start expanding your bee operations. So let's get into um, alviaries. Well, you do have to do a fair amount of breeding. And the first things that you have to get to for breeding are the industrial drone and the imperial drone. The industrial reason being is the industrial drone gives you pollen and the imperial drone gives you royal jelly. And let's take a look at those. Imperial. So this is a difficult bee to make. So if we do use, whoops, click on that. It requires you to get a noble and a majestic. A noble's made with a common and a cultivated. A common, you know, is with two mundane bees, forest and a meadows, modest, tropical, winter, and any of the two modest, you know, mundane bees will get you there. A cultivated is now breeding a common with any of the mundane bees. So those are the two first ones that you really go for. But after that, you can then breed them up to get noble. Great. Okay, we get to noble and majestic is now once you get a noble, you then do a noble with a cultivated to get a majestic and then a noble and a majestic to get yourself an imperial. Very cool. Uh, then the next thing is industrious. And this is with a diligent and an unweary. An unweary is made with a diligent and a cultivated. And you know cultivated is a common and a mundane bee. And a diligent is also with a common and a cultivated. So um, not too difficult to get to these. These are the first place you get to. And then once you get those pure, then you start running those through your aviaries or your uh, apiaries as much as you can. And if you can get more than one of these, of each of these, that's great. Because the more royal jelly that you can make and the more pollen you can make, the faster you can make these. You also get another byproduct from combs in a centrifuge. You get honey and beeswax, which are two other essential items for making alviaries. All right. The other things that you need, which you probably already are aware of, are oak. Um, I'm sorry, not oak, but you need carpenters. And you need a carpenter that's filled with seed oil and a carpenter that's filled with honey. 
reason being. The ability to make honey is you put your uh, combs in a centrifuge, you get your byproducts of honey and beeswax. You can take your honey in a squeezer and get honey, and you can take seeds in a squeezer and get seed oil. Seed oil will be used to make impregnated casings out of eight blocks of oak wood. Perfect. All right. And it requires one bucket per impregnated casing. Then the next thing you could do is you need to make scented paneling. Scented paneling is made from two pieces of beeswax. Here's that royal jelly from the imperial bees and the pollen clusters from the industrious bees and three oak wood. And then it also requires you to have um, a fair amount of honey to make scented paneling. Now to make each one of these alveary blocks, it requires eight scented paneling and one impregnated casing. These are quite expensive, but once you start breeding bees, you're gonna realize that the resources start to come pretty heavily and uh, you're, you're gonna be in abundance. Now the, the two things that are tough to come by, the honey, which you have to process, and then also the seeds for seed oil, which you can get from tree breeding. There's other things that make seed oil too, like nuts and things like that. So look at some of the recipes and it'll show you all the things, um, which is very cool. All right, also each one of these devices requires you to run power. I don't have any power to them now. I was just doing this and showing you for, uh, you can kind of get the idea of what it takes to make them. The other things that you're going to need are you're going to need golden electron tubes. So you're going to have to take a thermionic fabricator, put sand in it with some power, and this will create liquid glass. Once it heats up, you can make yourself golden electron tubes with some gold and some redstone. And then you're going to make diamantine electron tubes as well. Uh, you don't need a lot of these, but you'll need a few. Uh, same thing with a little bit of power and some sand, it'll make liquid glass, a few diamonds, and some redstone. By this time in the game, you'll probably have plenty of this stuff. Great. So there are a number of blocks that you can make in addition to the alveary block. Now, a basic alveary requires you to have 30, or I'm not 30, uh, 27 alveary blocks and nine slabs. And it is laid out like this three by three all right so you're going to make a block of nine by nine by nine by nine you don't need those extra three and then when you get to the top what you're going to do is take nine slabs and put them right on the top and when you put the final one up there you'll see it'll turn to an alveary when you get the things at the top. Great, we now have an alveary. This does not require any power. It will run indefinitely. So if you put two bees in here, they will run. For instance, uh, let's take our industrious queen and this. Put these in here. It's not bright enough and it needs sky. Obviously it has to be open to the sky. These I've punched open to the top and also will require flowers very similar to the uh, apiaries. Now I've got flowers over here and they are up. So that is one thing I did not do. So let's get ourselves a flower and then punch through to the ceiling. So let's see, do we have, we've got that and a flower and we should be good. Perfect. I was not prepared for that. Totally forgot. Let's put that down. So that'll solve that problem. It should go away. It's not bright enough and the sky is obstructed. So if we do this, nope, needs to be right above us. There we go, perfect. And it only has to be done on the middle line. So you should be good. And there we go, now they're working. Uh, there is two, this is exactly like a apiary, but they're a lot more functional and they are a lot more um, Resourceful, you get a lot more resources from doing these. So it has the same temperature and humidity climate control on it. And then it tells you about things and whatnot. Very cool. That's how you get your aviary up and running, your alveary up and running. Now, there's a number of different blocks for the uh, alveary that you can do. Reason that you need these blocks are for being able to change the temperature or get it to work in different climates. 
which is really neat. So this can work in any biome, but you can change it so it can appear as though it's like a freezing biome or a very hot biome. Pretty cool. Some of these L uh, blocks include fans, heaters, hydrogenators, rain shield, lighting, mutators, hatcheries, and alveary frame housings. Now we'll go over how to make each one of these blocks. You can make a fan, requires an alveary block, a golden electron tube, and four iron. Pretty easy to make. The heater is made with three stone, an alveary block, an iron, and two electron tubes. Now you're getting the point of why we had to do those tubes, right? All right, hydrogenator, some glass, alveary block, and some iron. It's just a different variation of a few things. The rain shield, uh, a few bricks, some electron tubes, and an alveary block. Also, same thing with the lighting. We have some glowstone, alveary, and electron tubes. The mutator, this gets a little bit more expensive. It requires two gold, an alveary block, and two of the diamantine electron tubes, which that's one, two, three, that's five, that's 10 diamonds to make one of these things. So be aware of that. A hatchery requires one, and it requires some glass panes and an alveary block. And then also you have a frame housing, which requires a few electron tubes, alveary, and iron ingot. What do all of these things do? Well, you can place them in any fashion on the bottom two layers. Now, I did try to put some on the top, which in previous versions you were able to do that. However, it doesn't seem that that is still a thing. So um, you have to make sure that you put them on the bottom. So you really only have, uh, let's take that alveary block and put that back. You only have not, you have, you know, six and six, that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 blocks to work from. 17 with the one in the middle, you can't use the one that's in the middle of the block unit, obviously. So you have 17 blocks to work with. Now, with all of these different things, each one of these types of blocks does something different. Fans will obviously cool off uh, the alveary, so it brings down the temperature. Uh, heaters bring up the temperature. Um, fans can also bring down humidity, and you can play around with humidity as well. Hydrogenators uh, bring up the humidity. A rain shield is so that your alvearies will work in the rain. So as long as you have one of those in there, uh, if it's outdoors, which they will be outdoors when it's raining, they'll still work. Lighting, your bees will work all night, so it doesn't matter if you have the nocturnal trait or not. The mutator will help you breed your bees, and the block looks like this. So the mutator will help you, actually, if you hover over any one of these, it tells you what they do. The mutator um, encourages bee mutation. Now, if you put some soul stand in there, it's 1.5. 2 times multiplier and I of Ender is 4. And there also is a uh, nether star, which gives you, I believe, 100% chance. So if you have a nether star, you put that in there. When the bees breed up, they're good. Uh, the rain shield will keep you from raining. The lighting will keep it lit. And frame housings will be so that you can put uh, frames in there like these. Very cool. So, and then the hatchery. That is another neat block. I'll show you this one. It looks like this. Let's go around to the back. So this is what the hatchery looks like. This is what the alveary fans look like. The heaters look just like that, only they're vertical lines. So very neat. They actually hold power. As you can see, it has a, a power icon at the top there. Very neat. The hatchery gives you larvae. So you can pump these out like this one using this into a barrel and it'll hold a, a thousand and twenty four of them which is really neat. So if you want to pull larvae, these have uses where you can help use in bee genetics to make, you know, more and more bees. So that's kind of cool. It's neat to have all those things. Very cool. So, and you can use all different types of things. So for these, I have these completely automated. I have a rain shield. I have a mutator, an alveary for light or a lighting. So that way when it's dark out, which it is now, my bees are still working. It doesn't think it's nighttime, even though it is. And then um, I've got housings, which I put my frames in. So let's get ourselves some frames. Whoops. All right, six. So we're gonna put three in here, one, two. And there is a way to automate all this, I'm assuming. So we will get to that. We just haven't got there yet. 
but all right and then there we go so what those frames do these are all proven frames and you can get these through trading with the villagers and it, they have two times production and it slows down your decay by a tremendous amount look at that it's like 30 percent um, of its normal decay so it takes 70 percent longer to, to run through but it gives us more and more homes which we should put six in there too so we can get more of that all right we'll get more blizz because blizz is good to have be able to Im improve our cryothium output which is definitely something we need to have and then this guy here perfect so and then like i said you can put any number of any combination in the middle like this so for instance um, let's pretend that these bees oh it's not bright enough look at that so let's change one of these blocks out we're going to take that out and put a lighting in and i bet these bees start working again look at that beautiful now let's pretend that we needed to run our our um our blizz bees our icy bees the climate's nine percent it's cold nine percent it's super cold and what we would need to do oh i was kind of showing off the structure on how to make an alviary but we just kind of did it on camera um what we would do here is we would take this take this block out and then put in a fan and the fan gets power like that boom now the you can see the temperature has gone down now if we take that out and we put the old one back in you'll see the temperature will start rising and it'll go back up to 80 or whatever the normal temperature is mm -hmm. very cool we can do the same thing let's pretend that we needed to be a little bit more swampy in here uh, we'll take a hydrogenator we'll put that in there if you look at the block it fills up with water great it's too humid oh no the humidity went way up great okay well these bees won't work with humidity so let's take that block out and replace it back with a regular one so if you need more humidity see it'll change the numbers for you so you can really manipulate the alveary to do whatever you need to mimic any biome that you need so for instance uh, this one is very cold and icy uh, the blizz need that this one is normal but if we go to our one in the nether that one is super hot and it works under the heat which is great so i now have a, a number of alviaries here that can help with any breeding that we need and uh, if i don't need them on i just use my little wrench and i turn that off which is really cool um to get frames um let's take a look all right so here's what i've been doing uh i get as many emeralds as i can take these emeralds actually let's get a whole stack and i've kind of been doing this on and off as i get more and more emeralds is i come talk to this guy i think it's this guy do you have six you do he has six proven frames so i put these in here and i take as many as he'll he'll let me take and there we go and I filled myself up with a bunch of proven frames. And then what I do is I'm just putting up in, in here too. So he has the best deal for uh, the number of emeralds for frames. So I'm just training with him. Uh, one of my other ones has one emerald for four. And then one of my other guys, the, my third one has one emerald for two. So really I just kind of go to all of them. I give them the three emeralds and I, I get as many stacks as I can we have a little surplus now of 220, which is super cool. Uh, it's really nice that we've kind of went out of our way to get ourselves the emerald bees, which these can, we can crush them down and get more emeralds at, at, you know, at will now. So that's really, really nice. Um, I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, let's take a look. So I've been making some progress. Uh, I do have a live stream that's going to come out next week, um, probably Saturday not this coming saturday but the following actually i'm recording this you're not going to see this video don't worry about the days you'll see it when it comes out but you may have already seen me put this together uh we were testing it to see how it would work so we understand how to do that and i did a live stream on that which was about an hour and a half it worked out it was a test live stream because i hadn't done youtube for a while and they changed the way they do things so but 
this is going to be in our near future. I've got a lot of things prepared, <laughs> as you can see. I got power. Power's coming, so uh, we got some things coming. And then I did some more work on the base. Let's take a look here. So we now, I've got, f I think you guys have already seen that I've got four hives. I did some terraforming. I had a whole bunch of terraforming to do, so I did some terraforming so we can add another hive. And then I want to add two more hives up above here too. So we'll have a total of, uh, what is that, seven? And then we'll see where we get with that. But yeah, here we go. Uh, I've got um, things going. I still have yet to decide if I want to get rid of these big blocks on the bottom or leave and run these through to the bottom. Or if I want to leave them there to just make it feel like it's a bigger structure. I don't know that I like them yet. I'm on the fence. You guys let me know down in the comments what you think. But obviously the pillars are not completed. There's a lot of work to be done, but you can see we've been making some progress. And yes, we did add a roof. Well, it's not really a roof, but that section that's on the bottom is gonna mimic up here. So this is pretty much gonna be like the observation deck. So you can come up here. I haven't figured out how we're gonna get up here other than flying yet, but um, you'll be able to overlook the bee land. And then we'll see our big massive arch that we're gonna make that's coming over, which will be another observation area. And then what I would like to do is since our nether portal's over there, is we're gonna create some sort of bridge or scaffolding that comes from over here over to that area that leads to the same, probably the same level as where the arch is gonna come out of the mountain and then go back down to the other side. So we're gonna work through that and then we'll, we'll probably work this into the equation somehow too. So I've got a lot of ideas as you can see. Uh, this is gonna go up and there'll be another whole ring above this and then I, I haven't decided how I wanna do the roof. Um, obviously it's a, it's a pretty large structure and uh, I haven't figured out really what I want to do with that yet. And I haven't figured out how to light it yet. So there's some things uh, that we have to work on. And then we have to start detailing it and changing out some of the blocks to make it look a little bit more textured and uh, get rid of this ring on the bottom and um, start doing some landscaping to make it look really nice. We'll probably start m removing some of the mountain and try to make it look a little bit more organic. And like we didn't just take a part of the mountain off or whatever but yeah we're we're working through things so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did please stop the like button it really helps me out it shows your support lets me know that you want to see more as always please like and share on your favorite social media and i will catch you guys in the next episode take care and be safe